you guys, Megan Visser here from Growing Up Herbal. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, then thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy today's video. If you've been watching me for a while now, then welcome back and I'm grateful that you took some time to come and watch today's video. In today's video, I am going to be talking with you about how to make garlic honey. This is one of my must-have herbal preparations for the fall home apothecary. So I have some notes here, just some things that I jotted down that I wanna tell you about garlic, like why it's beneficial, how to use it, dosages to take, and then I'm gonna show you how to make it, okay? Um, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click the subscribe button below and subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be coming out with a lot of videos showing you how to make some herbal preparations for the fall apothecary. All right. So to get started, let's talk about why garlic. Garlic is one of my favorite herbs. Not only is it really useful to have in your home for your herbal preparations, but you can find it in all grocery stores and so most everybody has access to garlic. Now, the great thing about garlic, specifically during the fall and winter seasons, is that garlic is a known antimicrobial herb. It's helpful for bacterial, viral, fungal, and parasitic infections. Now, garlic is really helpful when you have infections in the GI tract. Um, it's also helpful for respiratory infections. And so when you have infections in the GI system, garlic is pretty much gonna come into direct contact with the whole GI tract, the mucous membranes, and so it directly can connect with the infection, whether it's um, a bacteria or a parasite or fungus in there, and that's gonna help. Um, as far as respiratory infections, garlic has a high volatile oil content in it, and because volatile oils are excreted through the respiratory system when you breathe out, that is how it helps with respiratory infections. So if you think about cold and flu season, um, you're gonna have some viral infections with that and a lot of those viral infections have respiratory symptoms or they're located in the respiratory tract. So garlic honey is a really great preparation to keep on hand during cold and flu season or the fall and the winter, um, the fall and the winter seasons. Now you can also use garlic honey externally on the skin if you get um, like a burn and you don't want it to get infected or you have any sort of wound or bug bite or something like that, especially if you use raw honey because raw honey in and of itself has antibacterial properties, but then the garlic infused into the honey is just going to make it all the more stronger. So that can be a really good thing if you um, strain the garlic out of the honey and then you put a little bit of that garlic infused honey on a bandage and then cover the wound with that, that can be really helpful as well. So garlic honey can be used internally and externally. Um, again, my favorite way that I guess I most commonly use it during the fall and winter seasons is if we get deep seated cough and I'm concerned about that cough becoming an infection. I will do other things at the same time, but I do tend to give garlic honey to my kids and I'll take it myself. Um, and we'll talk about dosage in just a second, but I use it mainly as a preventative to keep, um, to decrease the likelihood of that cough becoming an infection in the chest, a chest infection of some sort. So um, one thing I wanted to say about taking garlic honey for infections in the body, whether it's respiratory or it's an infection in the GI tract is some herbs or essential oils that are used uh, for their antimicrobial benefits are very strong and they can negatively affect your microbiome in your gut. So they can kill off too many of the good bacteria in your gut. Well, garlic honey, while it is strong and it is effective for the bacterial infections, it's not known to kill off any of the healthy bacteria that's in your digestive tract, which is really great because then you don't have to worry about um, upsetting that microbial balance in there. So I wanted to say that too, because some people ask questions about that. Um, and I wanna make sure I put that on in here. Um, now, when it comes to dosing garlic honey, it's mostly used as a preventative, but it can be used during acute infections. That means when you actually have an infection. So when you are using it as a preventative, like I said, the way I use it when somebody has a cough and we don't want it to turn into 
some sort of chest infection. Um, for an adult dose, you're supposed to take one clove of garlic a day. So I brought out part of a garlic bulb here and I've got different cloves. So these are about an average size clove of garlic. Some types of garlic are really, really big, but I don't know if you can see that, but that is about a clove, a size of a clove, and you wanna eat that a day to prevent an infection or to prevent something from becoming an infection. Now, most herbalists recommend if you have an active infection, you need to eat one clove of garlic three times a day. So that's three cloves that you're gonna eat. So when it comes to garlic honey, you're going to try to gauge how much you take based on your needs. If you're trying to prevent an infection from occurring, then when you take your teaspoon and you spoon some of this garlic honey up, you're going to want to take enough to where it looks like you're eating a clove a day. And if you have an active infection that you're trying to help um, support, then you're going to want to have at least three cloves worth of your garlic honey a day. So you may need to make a little bit more. Now, um, if you eat too much garlic honey, it can cause some GI upset. It can cause your stomach to feel kind of hot and burning. Um, it can actually cause nausea if you eat too much of it. So um, I always recommend that you take it with food. Whenever my kids take it, I always do it around mealtime so that it doesn't upset their stomach because I want them to take more of it. And if it upsets their stomach, then they're not gonna wanna take it. And if it makes them nauseous, they're not gonna wanna take it again. So be careful with the dosing. It's better to take smaller doses more frequently than it is to take one large dose to try to get it over with. Um, now, there are different ways to make garlic honey. I used to, when my boys were little, I would take like a magic bullet or you can have, I think there's a Nutra bullet or something like that. And I would put my garlic cloves, I would take the skin off, I put my garlic cloves in there, pour my honey over it and I would blend it. So it would be like a light white frothy looking honey. And this kept them from having little chunks of garlic left in their mouth or if they didn't like the texture of all the little bumps of garlic, um, it just helped them to swallow it and get it down faster. So you can totally do that if you want. Now I just mince my garlic and I pour the honey over it. Um, and the boys and myself, we just eat it right off the spoon and nobody cares about that. We just swallow it right down. There's no need to chew the little pieces or anything like that. Um, again, if textures are weird or if like you don't like chewing on the garlic, then you can blend it and just quickly take it and you can drink some water or eat something else right behind it to kind of get that flavor out of your mouth if you're not a fan of garlic. Um, some people will chop the garlic cloves into halves or into quarters and then pour honey over it. And while that does work, I prefer to have the garlic chopped finer because I think that it makes a stronger preparation. It helps increase surface area of the garlic and then the honey can better extract the properties from the garlic. So I do recommend that you chop your garlic a little bit finer than big chunks because I don't feel like it makes that good of an extraction, if that makes any sense. So let me show you guys how to actually make the garlic honey by chopping it and putting it in your jar and pouring your honey over it. And I will tell you more about how to let it sit, how long to let it sit and all that stuff in just a second. Okay, so to make your garlic honey, you're gonna to need to gather a few supplies. The first thing you're gonna need is a small glass jar and a lid. You're also going to need some parchment paper. You can use bleached or unbleached. I usually use unbleached. And you're gonna need a pencil. And the parchment paper is going to go between your jar and your lid. So this serves two purposes. One is it keeps your garlic honey from touching the lid. The lid is coated with some sort of type of like plastic. And so it just kind of keeps your preparation away from that plastic. But it also allows you to label what's in your jar because your pencil will write on the parchment paper. And so you're gonna be able to look at this and see that it's garlic honey. But some herbal preparations you can't tell what's in it after it's been sitting there for a while and you may think you'll remember, but take it from me, you're likely to forget. 
especially when it comes to herbal tinctures. So it's really easy to take a pencil and just write on your parchment paper, garlic honey, put the date that you started it, and you can even put how many cloves of garlic that you put into the honey, just so that you remember how many is in there, because that can be helpful for dosing the honey out. Um, you're also going to need some honey. Raw honey is best because it has enzymes and raw honey has um, been shown to be antibacterial in and of itself, so that's really good. And then you're going to need cloves of fresh garlic. You're gonna need a cutting board and a sharp knife. And that's it, that's all you need to make your garlic honey. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is break apart this. Uh, that's got a half of a bulb of garlic here. And it looks like I have two, three, we'll call that four, about four cloves of garlic that I'm gonna stick in here. Some of these are really small, and so they equal the size of one of the bigger ones. So I'm gonna count that as four. It, it's not rocket science, you don't have to be really exact with your number, just get close. So on my parchment paper, I'm gonna tear off a little square here. And I'm gonna write garlic honey right in the corner. I'm gonna put the date. And I'm gonna put four cloves just to remind myself that there are four in this honey. And I'm gonna set that aside. Now next, you're going to chop your garlic. So I like to break the skin off of my garlic by just pressing down on it with a knife. Sometimes you have to hit it really hard, but that usually loosens the skin up and then it peels off pretty quickly. So just set the skin aside. You can compost that or you can put it in with your bone broth or vegetable broth if you make your own broth at home. All right, and so after you've gotten most of the skin off, I'm just gonna cut the little bottom pieces off. You don't really have to do that actually, but I'm gonna do that. Um, next, you're gonna kind of roughly chop your garlic. I like to chop my garlic in, I like to kind of mince it. Um, not only does that expose more surface area, which helps with the extraction, but it makes the pieces easier to swallow when you're actually taking it. And if you have little kids that are gonna take this, it may be better for the pieces to be really small so they don't feel like they're choking or anything. All right, so just roughly chop it at first and then you can keep mincing it to make the pieces smaller if you want. pushing my garlic back into a little pile and then just chop, 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 chop it. <laughs> you want it to be juicy and fragrant. You want to try to use fresh garlic cloves if possible. The older the garlic is, the drier it is. It's not as oily. It's not as fragrant. You can tell it's fresh if it's really fragrant and it's juicier. And that's what you want because those are the plant constituents that you're wanting out of it, those volatile oils. Okay, so that's pretty fine right there. Um, you're gonna take your jar and just scoop your minced garlic into the jar. And then we're just gonna cover this with our raw honey. And I just cover it. I don't put like an inch of honey over it. I want it strong, so I'll show you. I wanna, yeah, it's soaking through there. Okay. 
and I'll take my knife and just kind of give it a little stir. Scrape some of the garlic off the side. Ooh, I'm dripping honey everywhere. Put that back in my jar there. It may be helpful if you have a spoon, but I don't have a spoon, so I'll use my knife. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, the honey is just covering the garlic, and that's what we want. We don't want a ton of honey on the top because you want it strong. And then, cap my honey over here. You're gonna lay your parchment paper on the top, put the cap on, make sure you can see your little note of what is in your jar. You can see that but there's my little note that says garlic honey the date and then I've got four cloves in there so all I'm gonna do is put this in my apothecary and I'm gonna let it sit like this at room temperature for two or three days and the volatile oils of the garlic are gonna mix with the honey and they're gonna be extracted into that honey and it's gonna make a really nice strong garlic honey um, you can put this in the refrigerator if you aren't gonna use it immediately. You can store it in the refrigerator. This will keep the garlic from fermenting. Um, some people are fans of fermented honey and so they don't mind leaving their garlic honey out and letting it bubble and ferment because you do get some health benefits from fermented things. Um, but if you don't want that, you can stick it in your refrigerator. That's totally fine. Um, and then you'll just take a clean spoon and dose it up when you need it. Easy peasy. Okay, so now that I've told you a little bit about the benefits of garlic and how to make your garlic honey and how to use it and how to dose it, there are a few other things that I want to tell you before I wrap this video up. First, when it comes to using your garlic honey, I want you to know that you don't have to eat it off of a spoon. You can actually put it on or in your foods. So you can spread it on toast. You can um, mix it with a little bit of peanut butter if that helps to mask the flavor. If your kids are little and you want them to take garlic honey and they really don't like the flavor of the garlic, you can increase the honey just a bit. Uh, to give it a sweeter flavor and give it to them that way. Um, the second thing I wanna tell you is, if you do put it in your food, be careful not to overheat the garlic honey. Now, I feel like the garlic is doing the majority of the work in this preparation over the honey. The honey is really great for external bacterial infections, but when it comes to like internally using it, it's really the garlic that is helping with the antimicrobial part of it. Um, so if you heat it too much, then the heat is going to destroy the volatile oils of the garlic and it's gonna be less effective, right? So if you're gonna make this and you're gonna use it, you want it to be effective, you wanna make sure you use enough of it. You take it consistently and that you don't heat it too hot so that those volatile oils are fresh and they're working and they're doing what they should be doing. Now, the last thing that I wanna tell you about garlic honey is it is not recommended to give honey to children under one year of age because honey, especially raw honey, honey that's not been pasteurized, can have um, botul botulism spores in it and that can make a child with an, <laughs> sorry, my cat. It can make a child with um, an immature digestive system very sick. So don't use garlic honey in your children who are under one year of age. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that explained to you why garlic honey is beneficial in the fall home apothecary. I hope it was clear on how to make it and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.